Revit LT. It's cheap and we all love it for it. However, it does lack a lot of functionality that's available with the full version of Revit. In this video, I'm going to help you by sharing some workarounds for replacing some of those features that are only available in the full version of Revit. So I'm going to be showing you how to create the decals without actually using decals, how to use assemblies without actually using assemblies, and finally, how to create in-place components that are of the correct category. Let's go. Now quickly, before we jump into Revit, I would just like to ask you to check out my website, balkanarctic.com. I'm going to link it up in the cards above and then also down in the description of this video. If you're serious about learning Revit, that's definitely the best place to be with over 140 hours dedicated to all of the interesting and complex topics inside of Revit. Now, without any further ado, let's jump straight into Revit. And here we are in Revit and it's actually Revit LT. 2024. So let's get started with creating decals that aren't really decals. So here on the insert tab, we obviously don't have the decal tool. However, we can replace this by using a non repeat material. So basically materials work with taking an image and just plastering across any surface where you want to apply that material. However, if you set the repeat function to none, it's only going to show that image once. So you can add the decal image there and just adjust its position. Let me show you. So I'm going to go here to the wall tool, WA is the shortcut, and then let's just place this simple generic wall here in the center. Then let's open up the 3D view, zoom in a little bit, and let's make it smaller. And also I'm just going to switch this to realistic. Okay, so we have this default gray material, and then let's select this wall, go into edit type, go to structure, click on edit, and here let's find the material and open up the material browser. Here I'm going to search for the default material. It's going to open up the list. Here is the default material. I'm going to right click and then go to duplicate material and asset and let's rename it to decal. Hit enter and now let's get rid of this search. Search for a decal. Here it is and then let's go to appearance and here we have the image option and no images loaded in. Uh, so let's then go here to actually, let's just click here and now we can search for that image. So I'm going to be using this splash image. So I'm just going to click on that, hit open, and this is what that looks like. So it's just an orange splash. Now let's adjust the image a bit. So I'm just going to open up this drop menu and then go to edit image. And here I can edit the image. So let's, oops, so let's scroll down. Make sure you don't scroll through the menu here because it's actually going to change the dimension. So I'm just going to make this large. Let's go with, I don't know, like, 1500 millimeters or that might be too large. Let's go 1000 millimeters. Okay, perfect. Then you want to go down to repeat and here it says tile for both horizontal and vertical and you just want to switch this to none for both of them and then hit done, apply, okay, okay, apply, okay. And now when I click away, as you can see, we have that decal here in the corner. So it's just going to place it wherever kind of the origin point of that material is. In this case, that's here. You can consider this to be kind of zero, zero uh, coordinate. Okay, so now to reposition this, let's say we want to place it somewhere here around center. Well, I can just quickly measure by using the measure between two distances. I can say, okay, it needs to go off to this side, perhaps 3,500 millimeters, and then it needs to go up about 2,000 millimeters. Okay, then I can hit the escape key a couple of times, select this wall, go into edit type, go into structure, edit, click on the material browser, find the image, open the drop menu, go into edit image, and here scroll down and find your offset. So the X offset is going to be 3,500 as we've mentioned, and then the Y offset is going to be 2,000. And then you hit done. Click apply, okay, okay, apply, okay. And now you can see that this has now been positioned in the center of this wall. 
Now let's talk about assemblies. Well, we don't have them. So instead of using assemblies, you can use linked projects. So for example, we have this interior design project and here we have this uh, elaborate shelf and it would be nice to use assemblies because they allow you to create well uh, views uh, specific for this element or assembly. Uh, you can create different sheets for that and so on and so forth. Because we don't have that option, what you can do is you can go here to file, new and then start a new project. Uh, so I would just create a new project and I would call that project shelf or something like that. And then I would close up this original project, go here to insert, go to link Revit and then I would link that file in here and use this project as reference to model the shelf and create all of the views and sheets and everything that's necessary for that shelf inside of this project and then later on it can be linked back to the original uh, interior design file. And finally let's talk about in-place components that can be adjusted to different categories. So with Revit LT here under the component tool we don't really have the option for an in-place component. Now everybody knows that you can always use this in-place wall which we have in Revit LT in order to compensate for this. So I can just go here to in-place wall call it walls one and then I can create whatever extrusion I like just like this hit finish and then finish again and now we have this extrusion but the category is set to walls and you really cannot change that category well there is a workaround you want to select that object then you want to go to create group you can call it group one or let's call it the test family and then click OK. Now I'm just going to go here to file, save as library and then click on group. Now you can save this to the same name as the group and then click save. So it's just going to save that family. Now once this family is saved, let me just go here to finish out of that model. Then let's go here to file, open and then go to family because this saved that as a family. Find that family, the test family, and then click open. So it's going to open that up. And then here you can go to family category and parameters. And now I can change this to furniture, for example, and then click OK, and then go to load into project and close. Yes, let's save the changes to the family. And now I can place this here. Hit the escape key a couple of times. And now we have this original one which was walls, but also we have this new one, which is set to furniture. So that's how you can kind of go around uh, Revit LT's limitation of only using uh, walls as in place components. Actually, I was hoping to have five points for this video. However, with the latest update, they have actually improved Revit. So now, uh, for example, for flat roofs, we couldn't get any slope to flat roofs before. However, however now we do have that. So if I go to the three view and then go here to roof let's place it on level one and then if I create a roof but let's uncheck define slope well now this roof has the modify sub elements and I can actually add some slope to it also PDFs were not a thing with Revit LT however now we can actually import PDFs if we're in the floor plan we can link PDFs and we can also export PDFs so some of these don't have to be workarounds Revit has uh, or Autodesk has actually included these in Revit LT so anyways I hope you have enjoyed this video if you would like to get access to all of my Revit project files though are available on my Patreon page. The link will be up in the cards above and then also down in the description of this video. Thank you for watching guys. Make sure to check out my website balkanarctic.com for more uh, Revit courses. Uh, there I have over 120 hours of content uh, and I'm adding more each week. Make sure to subscribe for more videos and also I've added a video over there that might interest you as well.